Hello everyone, this is Aaron again. Got a very good unboxing for you today. Something I never thought I'd ever touch again, to tell you the truth. Um, I really didn't think I would ever, ever have this gun in my hand. But I, I have it in my hand for one, probably about one hour, and then it'll be gone. Uh, but uh, my nephew has come over, he just purchased this. I talked to him about the gun, he's been thinking about it for at least a year and a half now. Um, he on again, off again. And uh, now he's on again. Uh, I guess the gun has been winning too much across the country, and now he's been sold on it. I don't blame him though, because I got I have one. I got sold the same way, and it's a wonderful gun when it's shooting well, uh, and it shoots well all the time. It's just that uh, let's just hope to make this stays up. But with that, we're going to be unboxing today probably the ultimate gun in terms of buying and people waiting on it and six and eight week waits for it and everybody around the world wanting one and putting in orders early for one. This is of course the FX Impact Mark II with the 700 millimeter barrel. And today is just an unboxing. We're going to unbox this thing and then we'll put a scope on it. We're going to take it outside and uh, we're going to uh, set it to zero at uh, 30 yards and 30 yards should be one hole with this thing uh, all day long. So. Oh, also, it's a, it's, a, it's a 22 caliber. He wants the 25 caliber, but there were none available across the country. But Precision Air Gun had one left, and it was a 22. And since he's going to be buying multiple barrels anyway, he went with the 22. He's going to be getting the 25 and maybe even the 30. So with that, let's pull this thing out and see see how she comes. Okay. All right, we're back for the unboxing. Let's just take it out. Has not been opened. He got the gun. Actually, yesterday and left it in the box just for this. That was really nice of it. Ah. We're pulling it out. We're going to take a look at it. Of course, the impact comes with a very, very nice case. And uh, if you say anything like my Mark I, there's going to be room in it for extra barrels and everything. So I'm going to leave this facing you. Let me pop it open. And I will say this, they improved this opening. Because on the, on the first one, boy, <laughs> you had to struggle to get those things up. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this, and then we're gonna come back with a close up of the open. Okay, as you can see, it comes with a very very nice case, um, and they've added to it. Look like it'll be a place for a name name plate right here, which I think is very nice. Um, and let me remove this piece of styrofoam, and we open it up, and there it is. It comes very, 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 very uh, simple. You got a gun. You got a gun, and you got an FX manual that talks about the different areas of the gun and what you can do there. The one thing you can mess with everything on this gun. That there are three ways to tune it. The thing you never want to touch is that little fella right there. Do not touch that because you can void every warranty in the world. Um, that is the regulator. But everything else, but with everything else that you can do to to, uh, to tune this gun, you really don't need to touch anything else. Okay, let's take it out. This is the 22. Uh, the shroud, very nice shroud. And this is the thing I like now about the new one. They now have the the uh, this is the high capacity magazine. This thing here holds, oh my God, I'm looking at it, like it holds 50 shots. I know it doesn't, but it looks like it will hold 50 shots easy. We're looking at the manual to find out what that is, but that was a big improvement right there. Um, this the shroud looks about basic, about like mine does. And then in here, you're going to find the uh, thing for the, uh, for the field probe that goes up inside the gun. And another big thing they, they did. The gauges on here are accurate, accurate, accurate. On my gun, they had cheap ones. They got a lot of complaints about it, but they've now really stepped up. This thing says 100 bar, which is set it, what it, no, it's got 150 bar in terms of uh, air in the tank right now. But if you look down here, you will see that they have a very high end one here also, and it's set for 100 bar for pushing the pellet. And one nice thing about this gun, I will say this, if you do want to mess with the regulator, let's take it, take it up to 130, it's good because you can do it under pressure. So you can stick a little Allen wrench in there and you can wind it out and watch this and you can set this thing right here to 130 without any problem as you watch that gauge go up because you can adjust it out. 
is when you, if you try to adjust it in, that's when you're going to blow the thing up. So if you get one at 100, you want it at 130, no problem. If it comes at 130 and you want to make it 100, don't mess with it because you're going to void your warranty and you're going to blow the gun up. All right, another thing they did was great too. And I'm going to say that before I take it out. They have a protection cap over it. They did not have this on the, on, on the Mark I. So this thing was always exposed. You could get dust in there and that sort of thing. You don't want to get dust to sand up in there at all because you can mess your whole gun up. But now they have a snap-on cap that's very, very well made. So I'm going to cut it. We'll put this thing on a bipod and take a closer look at it. Okay, we're taking the gun out of the box and uh, we have it up on a bipod. For the most part, it looks, it looks about the same. In a moment, we're going to take a look at the, the one versus the two, and we're going to point out some differences and some improvements that they've made on the gun, which I, I think are pretty significant. But, of course, with these, you do have to take the shroud off, the extended shroud off, uh, on the 22 and the 25 and the 30. On the 177, they still have the extendable barrel because it just doesn't push out enough air to make much sound. But this needs a improved uh, silencer on it. So you get this extension out here. And this thing here, I mean, it's already internally, my, uh, it has an internal shroud right here. This is adding more to it and just takes the sound right down to nothing but a proof. And, uh, we're going to just go ahead and do a sound test right now. <laughs> I can't say it in the air, but it's mouse quiet. <laughs> it don't make any noise at all. This is a 22. We're not talking about a 177. We're talking about a 22. Okay. And if I pull up the one, mine, which is right next to it, and take a shot. And it's also empty, so we don't have to worry about it. This, this one here is actually quieter. In the 177. I'll do that again just so you can hear. Okay, this is the 22. This is 177. Which one is quieter? So they really, really quiet this thing down. It, it's, it's, in a 30, it's going to be, I think, extremely quiet. Uh, the shroud is much improved. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is, is another big improvement is this magazine. And, uh, let me just, uh, I'm going to cut away, and we're going to come back and we're going to, look, we're going to, we're going to load this magazine, figure out how many it takes. We're going to compare this magazine to the old magazine. Give me a sec, set that up. Okay, what you're looking at is the magazines from uh, two different eras of uh, impacts. This is a 25 caliber for impact, Mark One. This is a um, 177. Mach 1, and this is extended magazine for the uh, Mark 2. I think they, I think here they did two things. One, they made it a lot easier to load, I believe, and also they they've also uh, extended the capacity. Look, like they at least doubled it. But we'll talk about that later when we get it all up and get ready to shoot it outside. But another another giant improvement is extended capacity magazine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a scope on this thing and load this magazine and take it outside and uh, set it in at 30 yards. We'd like to push it further, but it won't be able to get out there to do it. But one, maybe one day we'll be able to take it out to 100 yards and let you see what it does uh, with an eight-shot group. So uh, let's go ahead and get a scope loaded up on this thing. Okay, we're back. And uh, earlier I did a, uh, a video on this scope here. This, this is a UTG AccuShot uh, SWAT and I told you the advantages of this scope and that how when I first uh, started looking for a real serious scope I took a look at the Hawk Sidewinder and then I looked for another scope that had all the features that I thought was as clear as that gun and I told you that there was only one advantage that the Hawk has over this scope and that is that the Hawk has, uh, if you take a look at the uh, the crosshairs in the, in, in, the, in the hawk, they go all the way to the bottom, whereas this goes down about two-thirds of the way and then you get a, a black bar. And so the hawk would allow you to shoot more elevation because of that extended uh, crosshairs. But with where this one beats the hawk up at, is the hawk is only a 44 millimeter. And uh, this is a 56 millimeter. 56 millimeter is going to bring in a lot more light. So when you're on a cloudy day, everything's going to be clear. When at dusk and done, everything's going to be clear. 
when you're videoing through this, everything's going to be clear. The bigger the lens, the more the light, the more the light, the more the clarity. We talked about that. So anyway, we're about to put this on this gun. I think that combination is going to be about as lethal as you need to be. Okay, the first thing we're going to do before we mount it on the gun is we're going to go ahead and put the, uh, the side wheel on it right now uh, before mounting it, and then we'll do the rest as we go. So basically with this, it's very, very simple. All you got to do, it comes with the tool that it takes to, uh, to tighten it down. And uh, I'll just walk you through it real quick. It's real simple, but for those of you out there who might want to go ahead and buy this scope, all you're going to do is you're going to turn it here, and you're going to see there on here it says 10 all the way up to infinity. So what you want to do is you want to match, you want to take this and just put it on there. And, 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 but you want to match the 10, and you'll see a 10 on here just like you did a 10 on there. So what you want to do is just match those. And when you get, when you get them matched, you just want to slide it on, and that's going to line, up, line it up so that the, uh, and I'll show you in a second. Okay, it's on there now. If you look, I mean you probably can't see it, but I'm trying to show it to you anyway. There's a 10 here, and there's a 10 there. And that's, there's your focus right there. And so now, instead of having to look, sorry, I had it the wrong way. Instead of having to look down there, you can now look on the wheel and see exactly. And the nice thing about this is this, once you get it set up, and we tried this, this thing is good to about 40 yards. And after that, it really gets so incremental that it's hard to tell the distance. But you can actually take this thing and zoom something in until it's clear. And say so that thing is 20 yards away and know exactly what your meal dot to hold on. But when you get to 40, it becomes kind of hard to do. So if he's 10 yards away, you may, you may have to hold over him uh, two and a half meal dots. If you don't know it's 10, you're going to shoot under him every time. So that's another nice feature of this. All right, let's put it on the gun. Okay, as I told you about this scope uh, in an earlier video, it comes with... Um, It comes with the tool to tighten it down and all of that, so that's good. And you come with an extra screw in case you were to lose a screw and scrip a screw. And that's the first time I've ever seen mounts that come with extra screws. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and the first thing, a lot of some people put, it, people put on the scope first. Uh, I like to go ahead and uh, now he's left handed. So I'm going to put this on the left hand side. If this is my gun, I'd be putting it on the right hand side. But since he's left-handed, I'm going to put it on the left-hand side. And uh, these are quick-release mounts, and I really like that if you're going to be if you're going to have multiple scopes or, or make any kind of changes on it, because all you got to do is once you make these finger tight, it's locked into place. You don't have to go no further than that. It's locked into place, finger tight. If you need to take a scope off, you don't need a tool. Uh, now, next thing we need to do is get these top screws out. Drop this on, and then we got to make sure this gun is level. And I did a video on that, but we'll talk about how to do that also. Okay, we have it on the scope, but now there's something that's very, very important. If this thing is off, especially if you shoot a long distance, if this thing is canted 5 or 10 degrees either way, you're going to miss that long shot. This thing has to be perfectly up and down in association with this barrel. How are you going to do that? This is the trick. You want to get you a little level like this. And on impact, it makes it really, really easy. Easier, and it's also like that on the Wildcat too, because they have a flat piece back here where you can take this leveler and lay it on there. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to do a close up of it, but that leveler is laying on there, and I can see that this gun is canted this way. So, what I want to do is first is to level the gun. So, I'm going to bring, I'm going to play with this. It also helps too to have either the real Atlas or the knockoff Atlas. As I told you before, the real Atlas cost $300, this one here cost $30. It's up to you. And, uh, and uh, you, know, you know the bad thing about it? If you read right there, it says Atlas. <laughs> I don't know how they get away with it. Okay, but anyway, let's level this thing. I like it. Perfect. We'll do it one time and do it right. Perfect. Okay. I have this now perfectly level. Now, what I need to do is make sure that this is straight up and down. The best way to do that is this. You want to take a string or rope or anything that's straight up and down. Okay, you don't want to use the wall, you don't want to use anything else. You want to hang something out there, okay? And you want to make sure this gun is perfectly level and you're going to look at that rope. And you're going to take your up and down cross here. And you're going to put it on that rope. And when you can see, can't see uh, any distance or anything between those two, it's perfectly up and down. So having this gun perfectly level means nothing. 
if you look through there and you don't know what the heck you're looking at. So hang something out there, I don't know, 10, 15 feet or whatever, and let it hang straight down and put those crosshairs straight up and down and then lock it down and you got a 100% zeroed gun as far as angle is concerned. So I'm going to do that real quick off camera and then come back and, uh, and I'm not going to tighten this thing down until that's done. And when I do that, I'm going to tighten this down and this gun is going to be set forever. Okay, we have it on here now and we have this thing perfectly up and down in association with the bubble and a um, item I put out there that's perfectly up and down. So we notice this thing is set. Okay. Now in tightening it down, you can disrupt all of that if you make one mistake. If you start tightening this, tight, take this screw here and tighten it all the way down, what's going to happen is as you tighten this screw down, it's going to grab the top of the scope and it's going to turn the scope. Just ever so slightly down with it. So the trick is to turn this thing a little bit and go to the other side and get it and turn it about as, just as tight. Then go to the rear, rear one, do the same thing. You'll feel the pressure on your finger when you get it there. As long as it's loose, you let it go. Then when you feel it a little tightening, you push it just that much and you go to each one in turn until you get that little bit of pressure on there. And now you're not going to allow that scope to turn. Then when you do that with all four, check it. And jump over here. You want to crisscross. Do a figure eight. Because when you tighten up one, you want to jump across to the opposite side of that and do it again. And now I can just finish it up here by just jumping across it, because back one would not be able to move it against the tightness up here. So now this scope is not moving. And you want to do it this way, the long way, because you want to do it finger tight. Don't, don't do it where you can get any torque on it at all. You use your, your thumb and go hard as you can, because hard as you can is nothing, because you have no leverage. Now once I've done that, now I can go to the back and go ahead and take the long way and just start to screw this thing. Then you're going to get to the point where you're going to put the same amount of pressure on each screw and it ain't going to go, no, it ain't going to go nowhere else. It's going to stop. That's when you know you're done. Okay, everybody, real quickly. The nice thing about what they've done with this, this high capacity is that the back of it actually comes off. You feed one pellet through the front to lock it down, and then you drop the rest of them in the back. Very, very quickly. And... Uh, and when you're done with it, basically all you're going to do is drop the cover back on it and it's ready to go into the gun and go. Okay. We're back again. As you can see, I pulled out, uh, in case you don't know, the Mark I. This is my gun. I wanted to talk a little bit before we close this thing out and, and do the last portion of this video. I wanted to uh, talk about the similarities between these two guns and the differences between these two guns or the improvements that were made on the Mark II. But let me just walk you through how this has happened. Uh, my nephew has been talking about uh, getting one of these ever since I got mine, or a little bit after I got mine. I've had mine for about two years or so. And he wanted and wanted it, and he changed his mind. He wanted and wanted it, and he changed his mind. He bought the Urban, and uh, I don't know, some months ago, maybe close to a year, I guess, ago. And he just wasn't satisfied. <laughs> This gun was on his mind. So he called me up and he said, hey, uh, Uncle Aaron, uh, I think I made my mind up. I have the money. I want the Mark II. And I'm hoping you'll help me. So I want you to come down. I'm going to be coming down to your house. He lives about 70 miles away. And you can help me order it and help me pick out the scope and get everything else uh, for the gun. And then once we get the gun, I want you to help me set it up. So that's the fine. Okay, come on down. <laughs> Do with me, right? If you know anything about this gun. So he's on his way down, and I'm thinking, well, he's going to be here in a few minutes, so I better get on the internet and get the gun ready so when he gets here, he can pull out his charge card and make the order. <laughs> that was a mistake. I went to every air gun sales place in America. Okay? Utah Air Guns, Pyramid Air, Air Gun Depot, and several others. I was even looking in the UK trying to find one because this guy's driving 70 miles to find out he's about to have wait six to eight weeks to get the gun. So then I remembered right here in Michigan we have a place called Precision Air Guns. And a couple of fellas in the club have gotten guns from there. One guy, he has got his FX from there, first edition. And so I went online and I went in I was clicking around and everything was pre-ordered, pre-ordered. Then I found one down in the corner. He had one 22 caliber 
700 millimeter barrel uh, extended uh, magazine for $2,050. So I said, whew. Okay, when he gets there, I can at least tell him that he was coming out to get a 25. And so when he gets there, I tell him, hey, I looked all over. This is one gun in America, and here it is. It's a 22. He said, well, I'm going to get that because I'm going to get a 25 or 30 barrel later. So we ordered it. And that's how he ended up with this gun. And he, he ordered it, um, what was that, uh, Monday? No, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Thursday, he had it. And the scope came in uh, right about that time, too. So that's how we got to this point. But let me talk a little bit about the two guns, and, um, and, 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 and I just want to tell that story because if you want one of these things, it's going to be six to eight weeks. It might be longer than that. I don't know. But that's what's out there right now. But let me talk about the, the, the similarities and the difference between the Mark I and the Mark II. Okay. Both guns have an external regulator. That is so wonderful. On all the other guns, you have to go take the gun apart. To get to the regulator, then put it in, blow it up. If it's not shooting right, you gotta take it apart again, take it out, change the regulator. On this gun here, um, you can do that externally, at least on in, in increasing the power. If you want to decrease the power, you do have to um, degas the gun uh, so you won't void your warranty or break the gun, and you have to turn it in um, at that time. But if you want to turn it out to increase the power, you can do that at any time, and that is just so convenient. So that's one thing I love about uh, both guns in terms of uh, what they offer. Uh, they both come with two-stage match-grade triggers. The triggers on these things are just amazing uh, to pull. They both are, have the large bottle 480cc carbon, uh, carbon tank that holds 3,500 PSI, and that's one of the reasons why this gun shoots, so, shoots all day long. Uh, you know, between the, the size of this uh, this bottle uh, and the uh, and the 3,500 psi, you just got a bunch of bunch of that. The gun is totally adjustable. You got the power wheel over here. You got the travel over here. And uh, down here, as I said, you got the regulator. This gun is you can totally tune this gun yourself. You can have the pellet shooting as or slug shooting at the uh, capacity you want it to shoot at. So. Now let's talk about the differences between the Mark I and one, Mark II in terms of what I've been able to research and, 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 and find out. Okay? They made a lot of improvements on the Mark II. Okay? Uh, the pressure grade gauges on the Mark II are much superior, much more accurate than the one that was on here. And that was one of the complaints they were having with these. These gauges were not that accurate. So got much more accurate gauges on there now. So that's, that's a big improvement. Uh, to me over the Mark I. It has a larger, this down here, this is the transfer port. This is where the air is stored until you pull the trigger. Okay, They made this 25% bigger, so it's holding more air. Because it's holding more air, you don't, have to, you don't have to do as much to, it's got as much air in there as you need to either shoot a pellet or a slug. So you don't have to mess with the regulator. The air is there for you. 25% bigger is going to give you 25% more air, and there we go. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, velocity for pellets and slugs. So that's, that's, that's really, really nice. They've now come with the barrel liner system. On this gun here, the barrel cost me, I got a 177, of course, and it cost me $500. But luckily at the time I caught it on sale, so I got it for four, and I think I paid like $79 for the magazine. But they were $599. On the new system, because of the sleeve system that they have, and the barrel just slides into the sweet system, I think you get the barrel for a hundred and something dollars. So that means you can get three more barrels for what, what I paid for just one barrel for this. So that's a strong improvement in terms of getting the cost down. Another thing they did was they have the barrels with different twist rates and that's going to allow you to either decide if you want to shoot slugs or if you want to shoot pellets or buy one for each. I'm going to shoot Pellets all day long, and it's on the weekends. I'm going to go out to the range, and I'm going to shoot 100 yards in competition. And I want to shoot slugs. I'm going to put the slug line in, and I don't have to be shooting those very expensive slugs at uh, at vermits and and that sort of thing. So that's a major improvement in terms of what I can see. Another one is this. Now this is not a true bullpup. It really is more of a. I agree with Ted. It's more of a kind of a cross between a, 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 a bullpup and a carbine. But what they've done now is they are offering 
I think they're offering a um, 700 millimeter barrel. Now, they call that the sniper edition. Luckily, when I ordered the one for my nephew, it is the sniper edition. It has a 700 millimeter barrel on it. So that means he has an opportunity to shoot the slug through that thing uh, with, the, with the proper uh, insert, or he can stay with the slugs that he's shooting uh, either way. So I would recommend, if you're going to get one of these, if you, don't, if you don't mind the extra length on it, go with the, go with the 700. It's going to give you a greater, it's going to give you greater velocity on your pellets uh, and slugs uh, than the 600 without any more air. Because the longer the thing stays in the barrel, the more velocity it gets. So that's another great improvement that I've, I, I found for this gun. Um, and the high capacity magazines, amazing. Okay, the 177 is going to give you 38 shots. The 22 is going to give you 28 shots. The 25 is going to give you 28 shots. And the 30 is going to give you 23 shots. And 23 shots was about what the 177 is getting on here. So the capacity of this thing has gone way up uh, in terms of shooting. Another thing, and this is, this, this is similar for both guns right here. Because of the, uh, the carbon tank on both guns, I believe they're going to shoot about the same. 480 cc's uh, bottle. In 177, you're going to get 180 shots. I think it's a little bit more than this one, in fact. But I uh, need to check that out. That may be due to the plenum back here having more, um, more air volume in it. I don't know. I don't know what to attribute it to. But 180 shots. 22, as my nephew just bought, 130 shots before it falls off the rig. The uh, 25 caliber is going to give you 100 shots. Can you imagine a 25 caliber shooting 100 times? And then a 30 caliber is going to give you about 40. 40 shots. So that is, uh, to me, that is just amazing. Uh, and they've announced two, 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 two more things. Uh, uh, one of them is they're going to come up with the, uh, the compact or the shorty. Uh, it should be out. Maybe it's out now. They announced it at the SHOT Show. Uh, perhaps it's out now. But that shorty is only going to be 25 inches long. And I really think that they did this to compete with the Leshy and uh, P-15 and other little small, cal small guns for carrying around and just pesting with or just, you know, hunting with. You, you don't want to carry this big thing out there. You can get a little shorty and go out there. I think that's to kind of make sure they're covered in that market, which I think is a very, very good move uh, for them. Another thing about this gun, too, is that a lot of people were complaining about the regulator in the Mark I. I understand that the, the regulator in the Mark II is superior uh, to it in every way. So that's another improvement for this gun. So basically, and, 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 and let me just say this too, this gun did have some problems, okay? Uh, mine had to be sent back to FS uh, USA for repairs. And so I think they dealt with that though, and they, they dealt with it in the best manner I think they could. I think that was well thought out. They went with a three-year um, warranty. So for three years with the limited warranty and you don't go creeping around the gun and messing anything up and voiding your warranty or, or touching that regulator in the wrong way and voiding your warranty, you got three years uh, of free service on this thing if it breaks from what I understand. So I think that more and more than takes care of the uh, of my concern which was with some of the quality issues of it. If the quality issue is bad, because this thing here, I, I tell you, they shoot lights out. And one, let me just say this: now that my nephew has this thing, uh, except for his is a 22, and I have a, he has a 22. I think he's gonna get a 25 or 30. I hope he gets the 25, and not the 30, uh, because I want to go out and shoot these guns head to head. Because to me, I remember when this gun first came out, and Ted, and um, and, and Steve, and the rest of was shooting this thing. They were shooting at 100 yards. They were shooting one inch groups. Then they came out with the uh, uh, with the crown and then all of a sudden the crown was shooting one inch group but this was shooting just outside one inch group. And then they came out with the Mark II with the new barrel system and it was shooting one inch but this was was shooting just outside one inch. I don't understand how this gun got scared when the other two guns came out. Uh, so I've always had this theory that I really do think that that in that application at least, shooting 100 yards with the smooth twist and the smooth twist X is virtually the same. I think the difference in these guns come with the, with the slug system, with the uh, 700 millimeter uh, different tw twist rate thing. That, that's the difference. I think, I really don't think that you're going to find, I think that what they really did when they went with the smooth twist X, 
was they were just accommodating the slug culture. And things were going that way for a lot of people, and they just joined it. Uh, and so, and since they were doing it that way, if I make the smooth twist, we can do smoothness X and make the twist rate about the same, only now it twists all the way through the barrel instead of the last two inches or so. But I'm going to have a chance to prove that theory. He's, he's going to bring this thing down here. We're going to take it to the range, and we're going to see. If they, come out, if they come out virtually the same, I'm going to come back and report to you there's no difference shooting the slug, but, I mean shooting the uh, pellets, but if you shoot the slugs, go for it. Okay, so that's my overall take on this thing. And um, uh, let me just say this. This gun cost $1,800 when I bought it. The new one cost $2,000, uh, $200 more. Is it worth it? I have to say yes. In terms of the improvements that they've made on this gun, is it worth $200? $200? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, would I buy one? No. And this is why. Okay? It's no count on a gun. The gun is extremely accurate. Okay? As I told you in other past videos, my accuracy is only for what? For my use? 50 yards. You know, if it's got a stretch beyond that, I'll take the shot. If I hit it, great. If I miss, if I miss that's all right. I'm shooting, it, I'm shooting it with a $500 gun, as you know. But if I was going bench rest, where accuracy had to be the issue, it would definitely be on my list. It'd probably be the gun I get. Uh, because one thing is for sure, they won every contest, bench rest contest out there. Now, they've done it for two reasons. They have a great gun, they have a great tuner, and a guy named Ernest Rowe, and they grab some of the best shooters in the world to shoot their gun. When you put that kind of combination together, you're going to win some events. But the gun does have to do its part. So I'm not going to take that away from the gun in terms of accuracy and that sort of thing. So, no, I wouldn't buy it because uh, I'm just a hunter. And, uh, and it's more accuracy than I need. And I can do that kind of hunting with a much cheaper gun. But for people who want what they would consider to be the best or to walk around with it, what, what they consider to be the best, this gun is definitely going to be high on the consideration. And until the other manufacturers catch up, and what I don't mean by catch up is there's other guns out there right now that can shoot a one-inch group. There are other guns out there that can shoot a slug accuracy. I, you know, first guy I was saw doing it, I said it before, was uh, B. Walton. He shot 180, 190, but he's using slugs. Okay, so there are other guns out there that can do it. But those other manufacturers like uh, Red Wolf, Pulsar, and those other $2,000 guns, they got to step up and start putting something together to win some contests and putting some people together out there who can promote their guns. Because <laughs> you're not on YouTube and you don't have some of the top guys out there, and uh, I will give it to FX. They, they, got, the, they got them all. Uh, the rest of you guys, you better start to develop you some people who can start shooting for you and some people that can start pushing your product and showing it what it can do at these ranges or stay in the back seat. So with that, uh, we're going to go to the rest of this video. We're going to close this thing out. And, uh, and I'll just say this. As far as I'm concerned, the Mark II is a winner all the way around. I don't see any area right now that I can call it a loss. But again, I, I can't talk about the long-term du du durability of it, but I can tell you it's a three-year warranty. All right, let's close this video out. Thanks for listening to my rants. All right, we have it all set up now. The scope is on it. Uh, we cleaned the barrel, and uh, what's amazing is we we put one patch through it, and the patch came out black, and, we, and all the rest of them came out white. I never seen a gun clean that much. Usually it takes about ten patches to get it uh, too white, but one patch. So they obviously have come up with some kind of new goop for the barrel or something. I don't know what it is, but just my final words on it. Um, I think that uh, I like the fact that they, they really, really uh, made it non-clear. If you take a look at uh, the uh, Mark I versus this one, the finish on it is a little bit more shiny. Uh, this one is definitely a more of a matted, matted feel. As I said, the gauges are better. Um, all around the high capacity magazine, there's a number of features that they've, that they've improved on it. So. And not only that, but it's got a three-year uh, limited warranty. I think it's the highest thing out there. And uh, so you know, at least if you get one for three years, you ain't got to do nothing. So if it breaks, you send it back to your FX USA and have to worry about it. So with that, we're going to take this thing outside. And I'm not going to be able to, it's dark now, so we're not going to be able to uh, film that part of it. But I'm hoping that we can take it out to 100 yards one day. 
So I guess we'll just end the video right here and say that I got my hands on and I will get to shoot today uh, the Mark II because I never thought I would ever touch one. But here it is and so I will. Uh, you guys, uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you for your comments uh, and for your suggestions and uh, for just supporting me through this. Keep it safe.